We've talked about warship designs a fair bit on this channel, and when it comes to the Star Wars universe, there's one design flaw that seems to just keep coming up. Exposed command bridges. So many ships, from the Interdictor-class cruiser of the Mandalorian Wars to the Venator-class Star Destroyer of the Clone Wars, have this massive flaw, and it's never even made clear as to why. It's something that goes unquestioned all too often, and so in this video, we're going to question it. Attention, Sergeant on deck! Was there a reason why so many warships had overexposed command bridges? Now, we could start this analysis by telling you why exposed command bridges are bad, or we could simply show you. You've got to give those fighters more time. Concentrate all fire on that superstar destroyer. <laughs> Sir, we've lost our bridge deflector shields. Intensify the forward batteries. I don't want anything to get through. Intensify forward firepower! Ah! What you just witnessed was an extraordinarily stupid way to lose your flagship. Warships are reliant on their command bridges, as they were typically where commanding officers, the helmsmen, and the primary gunners were stationed. The command bridge was the nerve center of the warship, and if it was destroyed, it could cripple a vessel. In the executor's case, the loss of the command bridge caused the warship to crash into the second Death Star, and it also crippled the rest of the Imperial fleet which was taking its orders from Admiral Pietz, the Dreadnought's commanding officer. With command bridges being as important as they were, you would think the shipbuilders of the Star Wars universe would have at least not made them such easy targets. But instead, a startling number of warships had their command bridges perched on conning towers, where they were not only easy targets, but also obvious ones. In the case of some warships, like the Venator-class Star Destroyer, those conning towers literally only included the command bridge and connected facilities, which means there weren't even extra decks there to soak up damage before the bridge was hit. It was a massive tactical shortcoming, and there's seemingly no reason for it. This is a fairly common trend in science fiction. There are more fictional vessels that have this flaw than don't, and the reason for that is pretty simple. It looks cool, especially when scenes on the command bridge itself provide a nice view of the vessel. In Star Wars, this features a lot in warships because a lot of real-world World War II era warships had similar bridge designs. Of course, naval warfare is a lot different at sea than in space, and while that sort of bridge design might have had some merit in the real world, in space, it's a lot less logical. But this trend is not universal. In Battlestar Galactica, for example, the show's titular warship has its command center buried deep within the ship's structure insulating it from most surface damage. This would have been a much better layout for the warships of the Star Wars universe, as it would have kept the ship's command crew and their instruments safe from anything short of the vessel's destruction. Compare the above clip of the Executor's destruction to how Galactica held up, without any shields, after four years of getting absolutely pummeled in battle after battle. To reiterate, that was with no shields, after nearly 60 years of service and 4 straight years of combat, while the ship was already in bad state. And yet, while Galactica was under a pretty intense bombardment, the CIC just got a few sparks and some tremors. That's a hell of a lot better than losing shields and getting taken down by a quick kamikaze run. And yet, most warships in the Star Wars universe took after the Executor instead of the Galactica when it came to command bridge design. Now, there's a reason that command bridges in the Star Wars universe aren't buried like Galactica's CIC, and that's windows. There is some degree of logic to having command bridges in a position where commanders have a good view of the battle. Sensors and similar guidance systems aren't always perfect, and sometimes the Mark 1 eyeball is the most effective instrument you can use for surveying in the moment. Windows are particularly important if sensors are being jammed or have been taken offline, which was a fairly common occurrence. Ion weapons and even classic sensor jamming methods can take scanners offline 
And if that occurs, then it's important that commanders can see so helmsmen know where to steer the ship and gunners know where to fire. If we take this into account, some cases of exposed command bridges are a bit more excusable. Many old Republic era vessels like the Hammerhead class cruiser and the Invincible class dreadnought had their bridges somewhat exposed, but built into the ship enough to provide at least a modicum of protection. But the excuse of needing windows doesn't work for all ships with exposed bridges. One of the worst cases of bridge exposure, the acclimated class assault ship, didn't even have windows on its command bridge. Those ships were entirely sensor run and yet their bridges were still perched atop conning towers for seemingly no good reason. There is an explanation for this phenomenon, even if it's not a very satisfying one. Vanity. It's no coincidence that the warships with the worst cases of bridge exposure were intended to be flagships, the jewels of powerful fleets. The worst offenders are the whole Star Destroyer line and the Separatist Dreadnought Malevolence. In both of those cases, Vanity definitely played a big role in the design. The Star Destroyers were intended to be the symbol of the most powerful navy in the galaxy, while the Malevolence was to be their flagship of the whole CIS Navy. Their commanders would have been powerful, well-known individuals, and their command bridges were so exposed as a symbolic gesture of power and status. In a sense, exposed command bridges could be considered a taunt to the enemy. Pretty much all warships in the Star Wars universe were very heavily shielded, which is likely why the tactical weaknesses of exposed command bridges were so commonly ignored. Shields didn't really have weak points, and larger ships tended to have extremely powerful shields to boot. The Lucra Hulk class battleship, for example, featured incredibly strong shields capable of taking multiple Star Destroyers worth of turbo laser barrages, which makes the exposed bridges on those ships a bit of a moot point. After all, if the enemy had the firepower to get through those sorts of shields, then they'll make short work of the battleship, exposed command bridge or not. If these sound like weak excuses, it's because they are. There really was no good reason for the command bridges of Star Wars destroyers and the like to be so badly overexposed, and it really just goes to show how overconfident the commanders of such vessels were. That's essentially the sole purpose of that style of bridge. After all, it's the commander putting themselves out in the open, as if to say they're so confident in their victory they'll put themselves in a dangerous position. It could arguably also considered an intimidation tactic, a way of implying that a vessel's shields were so strong that the commanders didn't need to care about being exposed. But as the executor showed, that's all just wishful thinking. No matter how strong a warship's shields were, they could be taken down with enough firepower. No matter how complete a ship's point defense array was, it was still very possible for missiles or starfighters to get through. And no matter how utterly massive a warship was, it could still be brought down just by taking the command bridge. Commanders who exposed themselves only ever put themselves and their vessels at risk. There was never anything to gain by doing so. Of course, this tactical flaw didn't matter much of the time. Oftentimes, the shields of these vessels did hold, and at other times, enemy ships had other targets than the command bridge, like turbo lasers or hangar bays. But that doesn't change the fact that overexposed command bridges are an absolutely absurd design flaw a strategic weakness that really only existed for the sake of looking cool. It's completely inexcusable that it was so prevalent in the Star Wars universe and in all other fictional universes that it's present in as well. But that's just our take, and as per usual we want to know what you think. Can you think of a better reason why warship designers kept making this one stupid mistake? Feel free to post your thoughts in the comments section below. And just before you go guys, if you want to join our wider community, Make sure you check out our Discord where you can chat to myself and other Star Wars fans, our Geetsleys Gaming Network if you want to play games with myself and other Star Wars fans, and the Patreon if you want to help support the channel. Anyways guys, as always, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.